All right, what's going on there, folks? Uh, good evening, Earthmaster here checking in on this uh, Tuesday evening, about 7.37 p.m. West Coast time, May 18, 2021. Just doing a uh, earthquake update for this evening. A little bit of uptick in earthquake activity following that 6.7 that struck out there. In the Southeast Pacific rise uh, out there in the Pacific Ocean, we're seeing an uptick in earthquake activity in the South America region following that uh, pretty large 6.7 that struck out there. Uh, let's go ahead and check this out on the latest USGS map here. You can kind of see the uh, uh, earthquakes in question here. There's actually been a couple earthquakes and one of these is pretty significant there. If you look at the depth of this magnitude, about 193 kilometers below surface for this 4.1. Um, I believe we're looking at uh, a little adjustment over here to the east. Uh, now plate dynamics and whatnot are a little confusing in this area when it comes to the general direction of the pressure gradients on where pressure uh, basically generates once an earthquake uh, happens. But uh, there's definitely some signs pointing towards the Chile area for some significant movement. Uh, 4.1 striking at 193 kilometers is pretty significant there. Pretty deep earthquake inland into the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, and just a little bit, oh, good lord man, my bird's going crazy. <laughs> a little bit to the north, uh, we're seeing a, little, a fairly shallow earthquake to the north there. Uh, west of the Andes, Bolivia area, looking at uh, 4.3 at about 10 kilometers. But this is an area to keep an eye on folks as uh, um, some significant movement there taking place following that 6, that 6 6.7 out there in the uh, Southeast Pacific Rise area. That's a pretty good sized earthquake. In fact, uh, uh, wasn't really quite expecting that. About a 10, uh, 10 kilometer depth for that earthquake. Uh, looking up here to the north towards the North American continent, the Pacific Plate boundary. Uh, this is the all, or at least this is the 2.5 and above magnitude map showing the earthquake activity on the North American side. Pacific side over here, west of the San Andreas Fault, pretty quiet. Uh, but a little bit of movement along the Ridgecrest, well, Barstow area. Ridgecrest seeing a little bit of movement up there towards the northeast. Uh, Barstow seeing a little bit of earthquake activity well to the, uh, well, northeast, about 30 miles or so, 2.6. Uh, we did see a 3.6 up here west or uh, east of the San Andreas Fault near uh, Colinga Avenal uh, region. Not for sure about the dynamics of the plate systems here. Of course, USGS does not show every single plate, but it's well off the San Andreas Fault by about 20 or 30 miles or so in the coastal ranges uh, near Pleasant Valley. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and zoom in to the all magnitudes here. Uh, kind of, it doesn't really fill anything in, does it? It's kind of just a, uh, a little s small little distraction, if you will, from those larger quakes. A uh, little bit of uptick along the San Jacinto Fault area, but nothing major, folks. It's kind of looking a uh, little uh, spotty down there, including the Ridgecrest area. Uh, a 2.0 looks like within the last hour, looks like uh, about 10 minutes or so, uh, within the uh, Pinnacles area, just east of the uh, Sandra's Fault system by probably a mile or so, 10.6 kilometers. So that's actually a pretty deep earthquake for this region here along the plate boundary of the uh, of the North American and Pacific plate. So. Uh, when we see the deeper movement, kind of want to keep an eye on this area. Bay Area looking relatively quiet. Uh, Northern California zooming up here along the uh, Cascadia. Just a couple small microquakes in the region. And some further movement up here on the western edges, northwestern edges of uh, uh, Oregon and the uh, Washington area. If you look at Mount Rainier, kind of getting a little active up there. There's been a, a 1.7 earthquake right smack dab at the summit of Mount Rainier and a couple small microquakes well off to the west at a reasonable depth of about 9 uh, and 6 kilometers there for those uh, earthquakes. 0.2 for that summit earthquake. So that's kind of something to watch here, folks. 
That's all we need is some volcanic activity ramping up 2021, right? Uh, what else we got here? Let's go ahead and check out Yellowstone. I've seen a couple folks talking about Yellowstone National Park. You know, talking about a, uh, a swarm going on, okay? To me, looking at this data right here, I see a small swarm going on. Probably about maybe 20, at the most, 30 small microquakes taking place here along this area of the uh, of, of, of uh, Yellowstone National Park, right about the, just outside the caldera, right? They got the caldera here in the uh, black outline, Yellowstone Lake over here, north north of the caldera area, caldera. But other than that, folks, we're not seeing any 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 significant swarming going on there at Yellowstone National Park, and this is this is very very minor. I, I can't even stress enough about it. Um, there's no significant movement going on whatsoever at Yellowstone National Park, regardless of what you heard from any other channel. Uh, I'm not going to name the channels out here, but it's a uh, it's very microquake in activity going on. Uh, in fact, if you look at the uh, all magnitudes here, you can see that swarming going on there north of Yellowstone uh, Lake. You can see that down here. Beautiful area, by the way. But uh, looking at a couple twos and some other further small microquakes at about, uh, looks like, uh, ranging from five to six kilometers below surface, confined to this region outside of the caldera, but still within Yellowstone um, uh, National Park. But nothing major, folks. Nothing to be uh, concerned about. Nothing to write home about. Home about and really nothing to even uh, chat about. It's pretty... Uh, it's pretty minor if you look at the uh, past historical swarms. If this does increase, we will uh, keep you guys updated. But for now, and that was like over, that was over eight, nine hours ago when that little cluster of quakes happened there. So since then, it's been relatively quiet, very quiet for the most part, folks. So um, this is something I monitor very, very closely, very, and I'm very active when it comes to Yellowstone geology and earthquake activity so um if i see something major going on this channel will be the first to send out a video uh, but right now this this activity is nothing zero uh, when it comes to worrying about yellowstone national park uh there was that 6.6 .6 that showed up pretty significantly on uh, quite a few stations you can see that right there that's going to be that signature of the 6.6 .6 or 6.7 out there in the Southeast uh, Pacific rise area out there in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Let's go ahead and check out the Trima, Trima Department. Whoa, check it out. Two days in a row. Zero trimmer, folks. Does that mean we're locked? Does that mean the area down dip downstream is completely locked and unable to slip anymore? That's a possibility. The other possibility is that we're relieving pressure out here along the west coast, uh, the Cascadia, to where we're not seeing uh, the dynamics of plate pressure and the subduction here take place. Uh, in order to kind of look at the dynamics there, you want to look at what's going on up here. Let's go ahead and go to the all magnitudes. Okay, There's been quite a bit of movement up here in the Pacific Northwest, and there's also uh, also been some activity here at the southern end of the Cascadia and these earthquakes here relatively deep at the southern end of the Mendocino uh, you got the Mendocino point triple or triple point junction down there the Cascadia mega thrust up here San Andreas fault runs to the south okay there's been a little bit of movement there and also some further movement up here to the northwest so that leads me to believe that the trimmer down dip downstream is well it's probably run into some resistance it's been two days of quietness downstream uh, underneath the north american plate so i think uh um more than likely that we're looking at a, a little quiet spell because of resistance uh further down dip downstream or it's very possible that uh that uh, the dynamics in this certain area are just not allowing for the slippage to happen. Uh, but there is surface activity in the northwest and down here at the southern end of the Cascadia. So it's something to watch. 
very closely. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Let me check out the volcanic seismicity here on the... Uh, what was that? Mount Rainier? Yes, Mount Rainier. Let me check here real quick. On the uh, seismographs here. Uh, description, no. I'm thinking that's probably not going to work. Let's go ahead and check this out here real quick. So, a little bit of earthquake activity. There's that... Uh, earthquake activity it showed up on the USGS map pretty significant size earthquake not not large magnitude but it did show up rather significantly on the gram there seismograph uh, ch -ch -ch, hello 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 so let's, <clears throat> let's go ahead and zoom in here please don't take my breath away don't take my breath away. I, I literally lost my breath for just a split second. So the 1.7 striking right smack dab there at uh, Mount Rainier is going to be... It's going to be... Let me uh, go back over here to the trimmer. Let me figure out where I'm at here. It's not going to be on this page. Although this activity is kind of interesting here. It looks as though there's some uh, swarming going on there at Mount Rainier. And we've watched this in the past. Uh, nothing significant, but it's still registering on the seismograph. So that two, what is it? A two, oh, 1.7. 1 1.7 1 .7 is going to be this earthquake right here. At uh, Mount Rainier. So how can I tell? Okay, so look at this real quick, folks. Look at this. UTC time, 02. Okay, let's just go 02. Okay, we don't have to be specifics on seconds and all that microseconds, but 02-08 is at 1.7. You look at the seismographs here and you follow these lines here. This is UTC time over here. It coincides with 02, uh, 0220 is this line here. 028 is going to be this area right here for this earthquake. So that's at 1.7. All these other earthquakes are much, much smaller, but nonetheless, they are showing up and they are registering on this seismograph station there. So looking at it, obviously it's a swarm, uh, but it's not being reported on uh, USGS map or on any of the um, other PNSN networks. Uh, what else we got here, folks? A lot of movement over here to the west, uh, Ecuador area. Uh, into China, into uh, northern India, 5.3 near Nepal. We did see that significant movement down here south of South Africa. Uh, got South Africa right here. Cape Town up there. Beautiful area. I, I, man, I buy me a ticket and I'm heading out there, no doubt. Uh, you can send that to earthmastermail at gmail.com. Just kidding. Just kidding. Although I would love to visit Cape Town one day. Um, so we had a couple of five pointers out there um, in this area uh, of the uh, African plate and the Antarctica plate boundary. A couple of fives and a 4.9 within a reasonable amount of time of each other. Uh, historical earthquake activity shows an eight pointer out here back in the 1940s, just in this little area out here. So some significant movement can take place in this region of the world here so we're kind of monitoring this activity so far there's only been those three earthquakes um since that uh, uh earthquake act uh earthquake update video i did a little bit earlier uh what else we got here folks there's that 1.7 is there another earthquake up there nope no 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 that's it 1.7 okay all right guys um yeah, just be on guard, folks. A lot of movement six, since it's uh, 6.7 out there in the uh, uh, southern east Pacific rise. Looks like Chile, South America region on the increase in earthquake activity. You know, this movement doesn't really necessarily follow a, uh, a specific dynamic of plate movement. When it comes to pressure generation, yes, there is your general... If you look up on Google... Google um, uh, plate tectonics general uh, directional movement it will show you arrows okay and it shows you which direction the plates are moving and whatnot but 
everything is super dynamic folks you can't really predict any specific area of increase like the 6.7 could have triggered something down here or further to the west but it's not it's triggering a lot of activity here to the to the east and some deep movement at that along the chilly area so uh it's just it's one of those things folks one of these days maybe we'll get it right uh but you really can't you can't predict uh earthquake activity out here at all uh, and it's uh, very complicated because the rock structure the geology is not the same here along the peru chile trench as it is over here along the new zealand area the kermadec trench it's not it's a highly dynamic area folks it's just you can't predict it you cannot predict it all right guys i'm gonna call it a night have a good peaceful Tuesday night out there. Um, if anything else happens, I will be out here or Missy Mimi's will be out here to update you guys. Uh, in the meantime, have a beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful, beautiful, quiet Tuesday evening. Peace out.